Yo what's up guys? I'm Archer Master here. Today I took first place in the world with 3.0 Expo and I will explain the replay of it. Let's go. If you haven't subscribed to our channel please do. I lost this match but it was a good one so I decided to put it up. His name is Japanese so you may not know who he is but he is Gariko. Before I go any further, let me tell you that this is a worst matchup, so you don't have to win. I've played a few games with this deck, but I don't think I've ever won. The spinning is so fast that the giant skeleton will be around in no time. Seriously, that's a tough one. I mean, shouldn't the Jinnut skeleton be nerfed? I feel like the firepower, the strength, the power of the blasts, everything is just too strong. More importantly, this season is seriously looking good. I was hovering around 7,600 until two days ago. Then all of a sudden, my trophy went up and I was number one in the world at 3.0 Expo. I've had seriously good luck with matching the last two days. I don't hit against bad matchups deck at all. There are three days until the end of the season, but I don't know if I can keep up with this ranking. I don't have to maintain the current status quo, though, because my goal is to top 100 finish. I'm aiming for top 100 every season, but I always end the season with a tilt at the end. I'd like to avoid that. I mean, the other day I got an update from my regular editing app. That content was to be read out loud to all text with a single tap. I'm glad because it's so revolutionary and exactly what I've been looking for the most. It has helped me to edit more efficiently and motivated me to do so. Also, I'm going to work harder on YouTube from now on. But I'm having a hard time finding stuff lately. So, for example, I'd like to request videos of Expo's guide or anything else. I would love to hear from you in the comments. It's been too long and I've talked too much about unrelated things. I will now explain. Basically, I think you should only attack when your opponent's elixir casts 6 or less or when Giant Skeleton is not around in your hand. I've noticed that in the video, I'm deploying Expo a lot, but it's not good. Eventually, when you attack, you will be countered by adding a cannon or archer queen behind the giant skeleton. So by attacking in the dark, you're often at a disadvantage. We need to tread carefully to avoid that. Expo is used defensively, not offensively. If the opponent's deck has medium or large spells, defend by placing them in a position where they will not hit the tower. Or I recommend putting Tesla in the middle to protect anything. Putting Tesla in the middle is very versatile and can be advantageous in basically any situation. In most cases, you all play Tesla after your opponent plays some unit and then in response. But if you have nothing in particular to do with it, you can play Tesla if you want. It is very effective because it can also be used to turn a card in your hand. Oh, and don't stick to one expo when attacking. If your opponent doesn't have any spells in his hand, you can put out a lot of them, but if he doesn't, your units will be wiped out and you'll run the risk of being countered. Always assume what your opponent will be defending with.
The rotation isn't any different than the 3.0 Expo. So the champion is on the field and the fireball comes around in threes. Isn't that system unfair? Let's go to the next game. His main name is Aragon. I didn't think it would hit me. I was trying to draw them. They're going to do it. I was nervous as hell, to be honest. Some of the trophies were high, but most importantly, they're mirrors. I've been asked before how to protect the expo. I've got a question. I think it's the most potent way to defend it in many ways. I always try to defend in a way that is less predictable, for example. The first time we defend with the knight's tesla and the second time we put the knight up low on the same side and break it with a spell. In fact, there are very few people who can do this and even those who are doing 8000 are often defending themselves in the same way all the time without being aware of it. I can't say for sure because everyone has their own ideas and sensibilities but this approach is very powerful so try it. As you can see, the Archer and Tesla should be as far apart as possible. Don't let the spell wipe them out. I think the basic timing to attack is when the opponent has no spells in hand. No Knight or no Elixir. Thus, if you don't have a unit with high HP in your hand, hurry up and turn it. One thing to keep in mind when dealing with a late fireball is that sometimes, the opponent will do a defensive expo. That's because we don't have that spell around in our hand, and they are trying to break the cycle. The way to deal with this is to turn the hand as quickly as possible. Or you can do a defense expo when you accumulate six casts. His spirit is so strong. Archer is in a position not to get caught up in the fireball. I'll keep on the offensive. If you place the expo in this position, the opponent cannot hit the tower either, so they will inevitably hit the fireball around the expo. So based on that, I put out archers from as far away as possible. When you gain a damage advantage in this way, your opponent may predict it under pressure so defend with extreme caution. Against 3.0, if you're playing Defense Expo, you can defend no matter what. Also defend it.
here, the opponent plays a spell, and since there is room to attack, I'm gonna deploy to the left side. I will use more and more spells to damage the tower as we go on the offensive. I think his spirit has a slight advantage, but I'm insanely happy to win. Alright, let's go last game. I wasn't sure if I should make a video of this because it's a pretty good matchup, but it's the only story I have, so I'm putting it up. For now, I'm going to put out a unit to match the opponents. Keep Tesla and Archer as far apart as possible. If the balloon had come in this state, the game would have been over. This is minor damage, so I'll allow it. Basically, if there's nothing to do, you can attack, but there is one thing to keep in mind when attacking, and that is that you must have an archer or a tesla in your hand. When they protect it with balloon like this, if you don't have an archer or a tesla, so just be careful with that. It's tricky when I don't have an expo or archer in my hand and they deploy the lava from behind, so I manage to pull the unit out. Now that expo has come out, I'm relieved. The opponent deployed lava and I'm gonna attack because my opponent's elixir is depleted. That's perfect. Predicting by Skelly Dragon is well played. Now that it's deployed again, I'm going on the offensive. Basically, if they attack you, you can put Expo on them, but be careful if the opponent have an Inferno Dragon in your opponent's deck or hand. Here's a little technique I've been using, using skeletons to guide non a balloon units back so that when the zap hits, the tower's target doesn't change. This deck is a really good matchup, but you can lose if you take your licks, so be careful how you play it. Good game.
If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. See you soon. Bye-bye.